Israel has one of the world's most powerful militaries with advanced surveillance systems and weapons. It also receives more than $3 billion in US military aid every year. Israel has developed its own mobile air defence system, the Iron Dome, with financing from the US. There are more than 169,000 active Israeli military personnel and 465,000 reservists. Israel has significant land power with more than 2,000 tanks and hundreds of artillery. Its arsenal also includes 339 combat-capable aircraft, including fighter jets. Well, to help us unpack uh, a lot of this, uh, we're joined now by Elias Hanna, who is in Beirut. He is a retired Lebanese general and a military analyst. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Uh, first of all, when we run through that list of the capabilities, the military capabilities of Israel, how worried should Hamas and those living inside Gaza be right now? I mean, they have to be worried, but they have chosen to go into the offense because this is the first time they made, like, they waged uh, offensive uh, campaign inside uh, uh, occupied Palestine, which is the first time because now they are measuring their success that they are going into uh, occupied land and they're fighting and they were uh, preparing and planning to stay and fight uh, uh, in the near abroad of Gaza. However, they have really, uh, uh, they, have, they have to calculate, I mean, a different scenario, because when you go to war, you plan for the worst case scenario and you hope for the best. So they have, uh, they have had in their mind that uh, uh, at one time they have to withdraw to Gaza and uh, waiting for maybe big operation, land the invasion for uh, Gaza. So they have to be uh, uh, prepared for that as far as logistics is mm. concerned, as far as tactics is concerned, and uh, at bringing and pulling uh, the, the Israeli IDF into Gaza, it's like something, uh, uh, you know, very dangerous for, for uh, Israel. However, uh, when you have, like, this emergency cabinet mm. and uh, uh, calling, like, 300,000 uh, troops and then massing these kind of, you know, uh, tanks and, uh, you know, uh, armored vehicles around Gaza, it means that there is something is coming. Uh, just staying with uh, Israel, I mean, they were clearly surprised by what happened on Saturday morning. And we heard from Israel's military chief of staff just a short time ago. He said, we will learn, we will investigate, but now is the time for war. What exactly do you think that Israel will be trying to achieve in, in the days now before a potential escalation into the next phase of this war? I think that there is must be some proportionality. I mean, this surprise and this losses for Israel, uh, you know, uh, intelligence failure, they have to do something at least equal in order to erase all of that. So maybe there is three main objectives, dismantle Hamas or destroy Hamas, then uh, freeing the hostages, and then maybe avoiding, trying to avoid collateral damage, which is not the case today. So these three objectives are really contradictory with, with each other. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like a war and trying to really uh, dismantle Hamas or paralyze Hamas in, in Gaza. Now, as we've we've seen over the last few days, there has been a huge build-up of uh, troops along the border with Gaza. From a military point of view, what would happen if... Israel was to send ground troops into Gaza. What would play out from that moment on? I think maybe we are we are witnessing now the first phase, which is really softening the ground, preparing the ground. This is the first one, uh, hitting like the center of gravity of Hamas, uh, uh, all infrastructure, and pushing the people to go uh, toward uh, Egypt, maybe to this corridor, human humanitarian co corridor. This is the first phase. The second phase is maybe going into Gaza, but before going into Gaza, they have to go uh, by force. Then they have to bypass the mines. So they have to uh, uh, bypass the uh, anti-tank weapon and then maybe the tunnels. So, However, I think that the Israelis will choose maybe, maybe according to some uh, uh, articles and uh, analysis, that maybe they will try to go and uh, divide Gaza in the middle. Mm. Because in Gaza, if you want to do something, you have to do to look into three main uh, things, main uh, pillars. Uh, demography, where is the demography? It's in Gaza, city, I mean, 
you have to look for topography and geography. Maybe in, in the middle, uh, near Dar el Balah, from the Gaza border into the, the coast to the Mediterranean Sea, there is like six kilometers. According to some analysts, maybe Israel will try to divide Gaza into two parts. However, going into Gaza, can they stay inside? Uh, what would be the theory of victory for Netanyahu? Uh, Hamas, what is after Hamas? Mm. So this is the whole issue now. Maybe it's a little bit uh, 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 blurred. Yes, and yeah, it certainly is. Now, as we know, Hamas is holding a number of Israeli captives. I mean, how f does that affect what could happen from a military point of view? I mean, there will be a hindrance for, you know, for the uh, Israelis to go inside. And maybe the Americans are sending with more military uh, uh, means to Navi team uh, airbase in, in, in Negev. Uh, they are sending some troops of the Delta Force. This kind of Delta Force, they are specialized in uh, uh, freeing hostages. Would these guys participate? I don't think so. And maybe they are, will be like advisory. However, Israel can, I mean, Hamas can use these uh, hostages maybe as a, a human shield that put them and dis distribute them in many, many uh, issue. And it depends on Israel. We'll go and uh, hit these targets. I mean, there is in Israel like the protocol of Hannibal. Uh, when uh, a soldier is kidnapped and you see him, uh, it's better to kill him as well as the kidnapper because a dead soldier is better than a hostage. Mm. OK, well, thank you so much for that. It'll be fascinating to see. Uh, exactly what plays out over the next few days and weeks. Thank you so much. That is Elias Hanna for us, a retired Lebanese general and a military analyst.